Me is Denmark's ambassador to India, a well-known face here uh, in the diplomatic community. And my first question to you is, uh, Denmark uh, is seen as uh, a dairy superpower, and it's well-known, one of the products uh, Denmark is known for. How do you look forward to this collaboration between India and Denmark? Uh, as you rightly said, we are a superpower, but we also want to, under the Green Strategic Partnership, we'd like to bring our skills to India. We did it uh, decades ago. We were part of the White Revolution. Now we would like to be part of the whole, let's say, strategy towards Vixit Barrett. And one part of that is, of course, to secure that the farmers of India can double their income, that they'll have better opportunities, that the milk that is being produced here can be given value. And that's why we are here, and we are working with uh, different uh, state agencies, departments, in order to secure that we can bring our skills here. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at some practical cooperation between the Indian industry, um, uh, inviting Indian industry, or uh, giving your know-how to India? Yes, we are. Uh, as part of this Green Strategic Partnership, we are putting up these days a center of excellence uh, for dairy in Himachal. A tender is out, and, and we hope to see a conclusion uh, for the bidding process so that we can bring the skills to, to India. And the whole idea is to put up a, a kind of model uh, dairy plan with uh, educational facilities so we can train as many mm -hmm. and transfer our skills to the Indian side goes without saying that India has to be strong also when it comes to the farming industry and milk where you are the world's largest producer, you don't get too much value out of it. So therefore we are bringing in companies like Christian Hansen's tonight. They are a long-term partner in the perhaps the most greenest, uh, greenest uh, partnership you can uh, identify. They bring bacteria uh, to the fodder, to the cows, to the dairies, and thereby also securing that Indian consumers will have the best product that they could be looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, so, moving to a different set of questions, uh, we know the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict, the war. Uh, what is the position of your country regarding the ongoing conflict in West Asia? Uh, when we uh, woke up to the atrocities on the 7th of October, we condemned it uh, instantly because it was uh, terror conducted by a terrorist organization, Hamas had to be co condemned, and it was the worst uh, massacre we have seen uh, for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're also facing a really a humanitarian crisis, and that uh, we also have to look into in Denmark. It's a strong supporter and bring in a lot of uh, humanitarian aid mm -hmm. uh, in order to secure that the civilians, the civilians unfortunately are also in this war, like in Ukraine, mm -hmm. they are suffering, and uh, we have to help them to the level uh, possible, which we are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, is Denmark providing any kind of humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza? And uh, do you think Europe will speak in one voice over the ongoing conflict? Because it looks like there are certain kind of subtle differences. Yeah, but uh, Denmark is definitely, we can see, you can go uh, uh, to the international media, so you will see how Denmark is supporting really the civilians also in the Gaza Strip. We have to help them. It's uh, the, the, let's say, the, um, Obligation is mandatory for the humanity to help civilians. Uh, civilians are always those who are suffering at most, so that's what we are doing. Mm. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, the geopolitical aspects of it, uh, I think a lot of countries will, will have the same line, but they're also looking into, to, let's say, secure their own interests and, and so forth, and that's why we are seeing that different players, also in Europe, Europe will have different takes on things, but I think uh, at large, we are all condemning uh, the uh, uh, 7th October attack. We are also doing what we can in order to bring relief to the civilians who are suffering big time, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So my last question, how do you see India's policy over the ongoing conflict? I think India took a very wise uh, position, uh, India being a democracy. Uh, of course, uh, you can't accept uh, terror. And India is a strong, strong player when it comes to the uh, fight against uh, terror. And India has been suffering over the years from terror, so there, there, there can't be two different views on that. Mm -hmm. uh, India has also, uh, over many, many years and decades, have uh, had a very good uh, relationship with the Palestinian side, and I think uh, the Indian government has managed to, to keep a balance in, in securing that. Of course, we can't accept terror, which happened big time in, 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 uh, the, on the 7th of October, 
but we also need to take uh, humanitarian uh, actions, and India is doing that, like mm -hmm. Denmark. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion on um, a whole host of issues, whether it's uh, how Denmark is helping India when it comes to dairy issues or the ongoing conflict in West Asia. It's always a pleasure to be with Vion. It's a lion of the Indian press landscape. Thank you so much, sir, for saying that. Thank you, sir. With video journalist uh, uh, Neeraj Sidhan Sibal for Vion in New Delhi.